If you're an earlier player, you're going to want to have Frozen Banshee. If you have her sitting around not doing anything in your vault, or if you're not using her and you're still early to mid game and progressing and you're trying and you're trying to do um, clan boss and do more damage in clan boss or the dungeons, namely Dragon, I would, I would highly suggest you build Frozen Banshee. She is highly rated, but again, she's an expert for Demon Lord and I guess Dragon's Lair too. I guess not enough. I guess Ice Golem wouldn't make any sense too much either. But yeah. The point is, guys, if you're trying to progress in the game and you're trying to pump out more damage, consider Frozen Banshee. Consider her A1, which attacks an enemy twice, with each hit having a 100% chance of placing 5% five poison, uh, 5 poisons, the big version of poisons, for two turns if the target is under poison sensitivity. Which, by the way, she brings her poison sensitivity. There's a 25%. Actually, it's not 25%. My bad. Her A3 attacks one enemy, placing a 25% poison sensitivity for two turns. So she has that in her kit incorporated. Her A2, uh, I don't think I've used this too much. I think I turned this off for most of my fights. When I was using her, I don't use her anymore. But uh, it attacks one enemy, fills the turn meters of all allies by 2% for each debuff on the target. So this can get finicky if you're speed tuned. So if you're speed tuning your champions, your team for clan boss or something, maybe don't turn this on, leave it off so it doesn't mess up the tune. But yeah, poisons on the A1, poison sensitiv uh, sensitivities, you're doing a lot more damage. Increased accuracy in all battles by 35 early on, you're going to want to probably consider taking that buff. If you get a blessing for her, take Phantom Touch. That just means more damage. Increase to all of these stats here and you have a higher chance of inflicting bonus damage. These are the masteries I have on her. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries, especially if you're using her in clan boss. Of course, I don't see where else you would use her, or against any of the dungeons, you're going to want to take War Master. Now, a lot of her damage is going to be coming from the poisons. She's not going to hit that hard with just her actual attacks you're going to be wanting to rely on her poisons and we'll talk about the builds and the stats here pretty soon but this is why we're taking war master i don't suggest you take anything else war master is going to inflict or have a chance to inflict bonus damage whenever attacking and then you can take all these other things extra crit rate extra crit damage uh increase the damage when your hp is full life drinker to help you heal to help you stay alive throughout the duration of the fight Increase damage if the clan boss or the boss has less health, less than 40%. Bring it down for extra 6% damage against those with higher max HP. Uh, Wrath of the Slain doesn't really apply too much anywhere, I think. But, you know, I just kinda, I had to put something. You could also take Cycle of Magic or Lore of Steel, which in retrospect, I should have taken one of these instead of this. But again, this was a champion I used a long time ago when I was still learning the game. Methodical increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill, her A1, by 2% up to 10% every time it's used. It stacks across the entire battle. Take increased accuracy on, these, on this side of the masteries. Again, take Lore of Steel or Cycle of Magic. That helps with placing and keeping up poison sensitivities. And Evil Eye to decrease turn meter if you're going to be using her in the dungeons. And I have Master Hexer on here to increase the duration of poisons. You could, uh, you don't have to take Sniper. You don't need to take Sniper because her skills already have a 100% chance when booked to place. And this one, I don't think has a chance. It just places it as long as you have the accuracy for it. So when you're going into her build, what do you prioritize? What are we looking for? So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to just use the unequipped items here. When you're looking at Frozen Banshee, you want to prioritize her speed to make sure she's going fast, her accuracy to make sure she's placing the poisons, and I would probably consider building her with some HP and defense, especially if you're going to use her in the clan boss or in the dungeons. You want to make sure she's surviving as much as possible so that she can place her poisons. There is nothing wrong with having some attack on her and if you want to get 100% crit rate on her go ahead do it extra damage never really hurts but it's one of those min maxing things that you're going to end up focusing on which i don't think if you're early on you're going to want to bother too much with 
if you're in the optimizer, you have to have a minimum of... Uh... Actually, you don't. It's just priority that matters. So let's go ahead and throw this in, see what we can get. And it looks like we end up with... And again, this is more into the end game kind of gear. I don't expect that many of you guys who are watching this, because I'm assuming that you're, you're probably a newer player if you're watching this guide. I don't think you're gonna achieve 47K HP, 3,700 defense, 200 plus speed with 500 plus accuracy. So what kind of stats does somebody want to look for? Well, try to aim for 30,000 HP, a minimum of 2,500 defense, a minimum of 180 speed, 160 speed maybe. Again, these are all the priority stats, but you basically have to work with whatever you can get. So whatever stats you can get best for your account, this is what you're gonna wanna prioritize. Don't take my numbers as the baseline. 500 accuracy is gonna be out of the realm, out of the scope for many of you guys. So try to aim for something like 200 plus. Just do your best basically. But we're gonna go ahead and throw these on her. And you can see the specific pieces of gear that we've got going on. I'm gonna take these, these off uh, when I'm done with them. Prioritizing speed, accuracy, survivability. I'm gonna take this off of the stun here. Again, survivability and accuracy. Go over to perception over here. Again, Accuracy, speed, survivability. On the gloves, I think you can go defense or HP percent. I'm going to go with defense. For the chest piece, we're going to want accuracy, but if you don't have an accuracy, a reliable accuracy chest, there's nothing wrong with doing HP or defense percent as well. As long as it has the other substats that you need. So defense, or uh, sorry, speed, accuracy, respectively. For the boots, we're probably going to want to go speed. We want to make sure she's going fast because the more turns that she can take, the more poisons that she can pump out. For the ring, we're taking survivability. It doesn't have to be a reaction ring. It just happens to be that that's the one. For the amulet, we're going to be taking extra accuracy. We have a triple roll on the accuracy, so it's pretty nice. A good combination here with HP. And then for the banner, we're going to want accuracy. And if you can get speed on it, go ahead and run with that as well. Let's go ahead and upgrade this since we are in an event right now. Now, her total stats. Oh, oh, oh where'd it go? Her total stats are going to be what you guys already saw, 47k HP, 3700 defense, 213 speed, and 512 accuracy. That's what we're looking for. Now, the main things that you're going to want, or the main places, I should say, that you're going to want to use her in are going to be in um, the dungeon, or sorry, the, the dragons. Sorry, what am I saying? The main places you're going to want to use her in are what we saw in the ratings against dragon as well as clan boss. So I'll try to put a clan boss team together real quick so you guys can see. And I'm going to use an all rare team. Keep in mind that this is gear that is end game. So is apothecary built a pot? I don't know if a pot. Oh, a pot's not built. Keep in mind they have end game gear on them. So don't take this as, face value for what you're going to be able to do, especially if you're a newer player. But the point is, I'm going to show you what, what she can do. As long as I don't uh, fail this run, hopefully it doesn't fail, because that would be relatively embarrassing. But yeah, you can see that Bellower is in a stun set, so we're helping to control the waves, and uh, Cold Hearts are going to be doing their business. But yeah, you saw her A2 right there, the Cruel ex ex Execution? Is that what the name is? Where she was able to increase and boost turn meter. Let me slow things down so you guys can see. All right, her A3. We're going to be placing Poison Sensitivity. What does Poison Sensitivity do? Well, Poison Sensitivity makes it so that anybody who receives a Poison debuff, when it finally ticks, it does more damage than normally um, they would take. So let's see if we can... You know, it's honestly not even going to pop off. Maybe against the dragon. 
So there is a difference, basically. Her A1 does place the poisons, and you will see that the poison poison's gonna show. Oh, the debuff got blocked. Does he block poisons? Why did it? Why did it get blocked? What? How did that get blocked? I have a 500 accuracy frozen banshee. What was that? Anyway. The, okay, so she's placing it now. I don't know why that first turn he did it. He didn't uh, do it. So yeah. That's a, a relatively easy team to put together, assuming you have those champions. Let's go into, um, what should we do? Let's do Brutal. I feel like Brutal might be a decent one to, to show you guys. We're going to take my unkillable team off. Let's do, um, let's do Rares and Epics only. So, yeah, you saw that Frozen Banshee was able to place her poisons. And the poison sensitivity is going to help out with uh, doing more damage. So let's throw him in, him in. Actually, let's let's focus on just putting rares in, make it a little bit easier. We'll start with her in the lead. I just realized I don't have a lot of good rares, so we're going back to the epics. I think Rector Drath is not built. We'll do so because Frozen Banshee has appropriate accuracy, and I think. Deacon is already stacked with a good amount of accuracy. We're just going to have him in the lead for the speed boost. We'll throw Inquisitor Shamael, and we'll throw Stagnite in for decrease defense and decrease attack. Sham's going to be there for damage. Frozen Banshee is also going to be there for damage, but uh, Inquisitor Sham is going to be more so along the lines of raw damage. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. We're looking for the third. We want the third Inquisitor Shamael. And we can put Farrick in the fat in, but I think we're going to want to bring in Rector Draft. So let's go ahead and bring Rector Draft in. Is she even built? She's not built. Let me just throw something on her real quick. Uh, could we get... Let's see. We want to finish off Immortal. So let's do... Let's do this right here. Oops. Let's put this helmet on her and just throw whatever protection we can get on her protection looking at this this is this is not exactly my favorite but we'll run with it yeah that's a i'm gonna sell that later and then for the amulet just pick whatever is right here accuracy this one yeah that's fine. okay so i'm gonna take quick battles off and we're gonna see um how much she does i'm, I'm willing to to see so, obviously, you're going to want to start off by placing your decreased defense and your attack. Deacon is going to want to do his turn meter boost. And we're going to, well, I guess he has the uh, decreased defense already, so he's just here for the extra speed at this point. We can place Perfect Veil, which increases our resistance. I don't know if it increases our damage. Inquisitor Sham is going to be pumping out some damage, raw damage here. Because this team is not speed tuned, we are okay to fill turn meter full or fill the turn meter if we wanted to. We could also uh, place poison sensitivities, which is going to help out with our extra damage. So I'm going to let this thing run on auto and see how far we can get. Yeah, so in terms of damage, I think Frozen Banshee is going to be a boon for. Actually, you know what? Here, let, let's. Uh, I'm gonna let this run to like the tenth turn. Then I'm gonna pop out of here, and then I'll do a quick battle to show you guys what the actual results will be. But yeah, um, the damage that comes from Frozen Banshee is phenomenal. You can see all the poisons that she places with poison sensitivity. It does even more damage. So let's pay attention and slow down when the boss takes a turn. We're looking at 62.5k per poison tick, which is a Good sum, right? Now I'm gonna see if I can wait for this poison sensitivity to fall off and we can see the difference between, let's just A1. Let's A1, let's get that poison sensitivity debuff off so we can compare. Because right now the poison, sensi or poison sensitivity is adding to the damage and the poison is ticking for 62.5. But let's see how much we're gonna be doing without that. Right here, let's see. Why does it get blocked sometimes, I wonder? The 
poisons get blocked. Is there something with their A1? Uh, 50k. So 50k, that was the damage without the poison sensitivity. Uh, oh, each hit has a 50% as an... Oh, the target has to be under poison sensitivity. You guys, my bad. You have to start with your A3. You're not going to be placing poisons unless you have poison sensitivity on him. So that might be a downside to him. Uh, to Frozen Banshee, but let's go ahead and exit out of here, and let's go back in to Brutal. We'll do a quick battle, same setup, nothing changed. We'll see what the total damage is going to be. Remember that Frozen Banshee does have a blessing on. So this is not too bad. This is actually pretty good for something that wasn't optimized or anything. Frozen Banshee pumping out 13.7 million damage 